How you doing? It's Zach Allen. We're going to talk a little bit about the mental side of golf today, right? Which I don't always delve into that much, but this is really important, right? Especially those of you out there, I've got a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of content on the internet. There's probably other things that you're watching. We can get this mind so full of stuff that we get a little bit of what's called paralysis by analysis, right? This we're, as we're going through our golf swing out on the driving range playing, we're just building thoughts, building thoughts, and they can be constructive, good thoughts, but you're gonna reach a point where you have too many thoughts and it's gonna overload the system. And that's where we get the paralysis, right? Paralysis is, I can't move, right? I'm frozen. And then we make a swing that, you know, had good intentions, but it's herky-jerky, it's tense, it's not fluid, um, it's not in the moment, right? We want all those things to happen in order to swing the best and play our best golf, right? So you don't wanna forget about that, right? Because obviously a lot of stuff depends on you having good technique, but at the end of the day, you need to flow and have rhythm and it needs to be just fluid in your mind, right? That's when you're a master of something. So a really interesting video here, right? This is, this is a super famous video. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you never have. It's called the Coleman video and it's Ben Hogan hitting balls and he's in his 80s at this time. He's well up in age. He does this multiple times in his life where he does this slow motion training, okay? And, you know, we could talk a, a bunch of different videos just about that, about how interesting it was because, you know, he's arguably the best swinger, father of the modern golf swing, they call him. But when they ask him to hit a ball in slow motion, it's so interesting. He doesn't get up and just set up and hit it. He actually goes through his entire pre-shot setup as he moves into the golf ball, you know, because in his mind, that's all a part of the golf swing. And what happens when we get paralysis by analysis is we tend to kind of get over the ball and we freeze a little bit. We're not just fluidly reacting to our target, just feeling the ground and in motion, connecting our eyes, visualizing and feeling what we want. We go into another part of our brain that's a little more analytical, judgmental and stressful. So. I thought it was so interesting there because obviously like he believes that this is all a part of his, his whole motion is his approach into the golf ball. So what I have a lot of students do, especially students that are getting a little bogged down with mechanics, and I even do it with myself periodically because I think we can all get that way. In an effort to get better and improve our swing, we kind of start compiling mechanical thoughts. So I have my students do a couple different drills, right? And they're basically just called walk-up drills. So I've got a ball out here, right, ready to hit, and this seems a little odd, but I'm going to, I'll, I'll do a practice swing first, but I'm gonna walk up and just take a practice swing just right next to it, okay? Because eventually I'm actually gonna hit one like this. So I'm step back behind it, a couple steps, in and through. And I know your first instance is like, that's like Happy Gilmore, right? It's like, eh, it might be a little mini Happy Gilmore, and I've done videos in the past about doing the Happy Gilmore and how there's a lot of different professionals that have actually done it, and it really helped me at one point. I wouldn't call this a Happy Gilmore. This is just kind of releasing the inner athlete out of you. We don't need to go crazy and swing for the fences like Happy Gilmore, like you see kids, annoying kids on the driving range doing sometimes, right? Having a good time, just trying to blast it, probably breaking their driver at the same point or their dad's driver. This is just to kind of unleash your feet from the ground, um, get you flowing and in motion and um, almost like we're hitting a moving target rather than setting up to the ball right trying to set up correctly going through this checklist in your mind of swing ones swing thought two swing a swing C this is what I'm gonna do here we're kind of connecting the dots and then we take one glance at the target and then we swing good intent but it's gonna be bad execution because there is no fluidity to it so this kind of helps us to just kind of unleash that. So as you do this drill, it's pretty simple. It's good just to start, you know, with, with a practice swing. You're going to take a couple steps and then walk into it and swing. And obviously one of the coolest things, we all know how to walk. Last time I checked, I don't see too many people walking stiff like robots, right? They've just, you know, you've got this fluid walk to your gait, to your steps, to your arms. So as you walk into it, you're gonna to start to feel that same motion. If you get a little more brave, you can step back a little farther and you can take a couple more steps and then swing through a little harder. And you'll feel right away, it's almost impossible not to finish fluidly and fully. And 
you know, at this point, you're basically just trying to not fall over, uh, hit somewhere near where you're trying to hit, and a lot of these swing thoughts kind of start to go away. And I'm here to tell you, that's perfectly normal for a period of time, okay? Let go of the technique for parts of time during your practice, clear the mechanism, right? To take that term from Bull Durham, right? When the pitcher couldn't throw it straight, he needed to clear this out. And then we can go back to thinking about some technique, right? But it's good just to periodically just clean, clean the, the, the hard drive there per se, right? And this drill really helps you to do it because basically in order to do it, you can't think about much. Now, once I, once I feel like I'm gonna go ahead and try to hit one, I'm probably not gonna step back that far. I'm just a couple paces behind the ball. I don't care how the ball goes. I'm just, you know, I'm hitting basically in a sense a moving ball and then on through. That ball went halfway decent, went 102 yards, not very far. I'm hitting a seven iron, but that's not the point, right? The point is just to kind of get that athlete to come back out and, you know, get the, the person that's up there just, you know, overthinking it to just stay away for a little bit. So let's try that again. And I like to kind of just do other things, things that you kind of see in that Hogan video where he's doing things, moving his feet and he's waggling intentional things that help get us in the moment, get us to feel the weight of the club, get us to connect with our feet. And basically we become more athletic. Like you're standing there playing defense in basketball and you're just getting ready to go. We're not paralyzed, right? So I have been like doing this, just dropping the club on the ground, feeling the weight of the club. It helps to relax my arms. And then let's walk into it and hit it again. And I'm not even holding the club in both hands. I'm gonna grip it and then go ahead and hit it. That one went 108 yards, not quite as straight. I hit it on the toe a little bit. That's totally fine. Like I said, we're just really trying to get that sense of just fluidity and flow. If you watch it from this view, if I had a ball here, I'm basically standing about here and I'm just taking a couple little steps and then I'm hitting the ground kind of in the same location the ball would. Once again, back here, all right, relax. Ball, target, go, and then right on through. And I think if you guys look at that, that looks pretty darn good, right? It's really helpful. What I'll even do from time to time, I'll even take balls as my students hitting them, I'll roll them into them and they'll try to hit a moving ball. So these are just good, healthy drills just to kind of unlock our brain a little bit. So if that's you and you feel like you're getting a little locked up and you're losing that athlete that used to be pretty darn good at other sports or even pretty good at golf, give this drill a shot. You know, you don't got to do it all the time and you don't got to not think about technique at all because obviously there's something wrong with your technique. We need to slowly and correctly change it, but in a way that's healthy, not in a way that where you get paralyzed by, by overthinking it. Okay. So if that's you go out and give this drill a shot, try it. Obviously, if you're out on the driving range, you might get a couple weird looks. You can even try it with just practice swings if you're a little bashful, but I would try it with some golf balls, right? Just to really get a sense of what that feels like. And sometimes it's good just to give yourself permission to not think about five things before we hit a ball and to give yourself permission, just go ahead and hit a bad ball. Who cares, right? That's kind of sometimes the stuff that locks us up. It's like, we've got to conform. We've got to do this. We've got to hit this position. We've got to hit it good. And it's like, boy, that promotes a lot of tension in the golf swing. All right, give that a shot and I'll see you guys next, next video lesson. Thanks for watching. If you're looking for a way to get more consistency in your golf swing, then I've got just the thing for you. I've put together a three-part training series where I walk you through an easy process with one goal in mind, giving you a more efficient, athletic, and consistent golf swing. I call it the consistency clinic. And you can get the entire thing free of charge by clicking the link right here. This training series isn't available anywhere else, so go ahead, click the link right now, and I'll see you on the other side.